Welcome back to the Oregon Makers channel. Um, today we're going to do a tile tabletop and here's the process of breaking down the legs. It's cherry, uh, started with eight quarter. So I cut it a little fat, like a 30 second, uh, wider than I need. And then uh, I make a pass with the cutoff on the joiner just to give me a nice straight edge again. And then I cut that again to get my four pieces. And I do the uh, vacuum shuffle here between the joiner and the table saw. And then I just run the cut face across the joiner. I have the joiner set just to it, uh, 30 seconds. So now I've got all the legs square and I'm laying out the mortises. Um, so the rails are going to be inset with the mortise and tenon here. And I pretty much really mark out one and I set up my uh, mortiser to this one. But I do put pencil marks on everything just so I know where I'm at. And I put a little triangle at the top, so they're all oriented. I kind of, kind of, all keep them in the direction they need to be. And I am fortunate enough to have a mortising machine. Um, I built a lot of craftsman furniture, like a eight chairs for a dining room. So it's nice to have the mortiser. So I just have a little stop block set up there. Uh, to kind of give me my width of my mortise and then I have to put the stop block on the other side to do the other mortise. And then I'm getting a piece ready for uh, the aprons. I just joined one edge and basically cut it to my width plus the length of the tenons. And it's pretty much going to be the same process here where I um, rip it down, join it, and rip it again. Well, I think this time I probably gave myself enough room to join both edges. Vacuum switcheroo. And clean up all the edges. So here's my layout for my tenon. I just did that with a marking gauge. Using a stop block, uh, which is a 1, 2, 3 block, and my miter gauge and cutting the shoulders and the faces. Stop block wanted to go for a ride. And then I make an adjustment to the blade. Just raise it up a little bit. And then doing the, the cheek cuts here. And a tenoning jig, uh, kind of a old school tool here. This thing weighs, I don't know, 20 pounds. It's heavy duty cast iron. So I just kind of set the, a lot of adjustments on this thing. I just kind of dial in the fit here um, for the width. I can move this back and forth. And here I am kind of double checking the fit. tightish, which is good. Okay, now I'm going to cut the little ears off the tenon here. I used to always do this uh, with the miter gauge and the, just kind of nibble at it with the saw blade and I saw somebody use the tenon gauge and I was like, huh, never thought to turn it sideways like that. So that was new for me. So now cleaning up the mortises. Um, the mortiser does a really good job. If um, I was doing 
like I did with the dining room chairs years ago. I didn't really have a whole lot of cleanup because I kind of didn't make everything as, quite as tight. Uh, but I'm just trying to sweeten this up a little bit and fitting the tenons. So I marked all the apron so each tenon went to the right mortise. This is me just kind of the process of fitting one of them, and I do that eight times. So now I'm cutting the tapers. I have an old tapering jig, um, and just kind of set up what I want. I wanted about an inch at the bottom, two inches at the top. And here is where I make a mistake. Um, I'm smart about which face I'm cutting, but I have the piece in uh, saw backwards and I don't realize it quite yet but I'm about to cut right through my mortise and here comes the point of realization so minor setback thought about turning the camera off and going for a walk but I was like no I'm just gonna power through I can fix this Having the legs being tapered was the only reason I could really fix this. And then do those, uh, the taper a little fat, and then give me enough room to uh, run it through the dryer. So it's important to start your taper an inch or so below where the apron meets the leg. That way it's still square there, and you don't have to deal with the taper against the apron because then it looks like the pieces don't fit so that's kind of how I set that up and now is the time to sand so I'm showing the sanding processes along the way here this is kind of my first fine furniture build uh, future builds I'll probably skip this part because it's not exciting but I want to people to know what it takes to build fine furniture versus shop furniture or garden furniture. Um, there's a little bit more of an effort that you put into it. Pretty much 220 is what I'm sanding to here. Um, I really like the wood off of the joiner. Um, but the oil finish likes it a little better if it's sanded. And for some reason I did not film the actual glue up but here it is you can see I kind of taped on the shoulders for the glue squeeze out and I have clamps at the bottom just to make sure that the table is square so the outer dimension of the table is the same top and bottom the tapers go to the inside so now I'm cutting down a sheet of plywood it's going to be the base for the tile apron for the tabletop. Same process as before. Joint cut, joint some more. Um, cutting the miters. First time I've used this miter sled. I usually do this on my miter table, but I thought I'd give this a shot. Fitting everything up. So now I'm going to lay out biscuits. Pretty much more for alignment than anything. Um, I'm just doing it flat on the plywood here. Um, I cut the thickness of the apron to allow for the tile uh, in the plywood. So when the tile is on the plywood, it's going to be level with the apron here. So um, at the bottom for the plywood and then halfway through for the miters and then gluing everything up. So mostly for alignment, a little bit for strength. And cutting that, the plywood base to be the width of the tiles plus the grout on 
all four sides. It was a little bit of math involved and second guessing, of course. So just kind of cleaning up the glue with an old credit card, letting that cure, and then sanding. So as you can see, the bottom piece of the wood aren't great. So when you're at the lumber store and you see pieces um, that aren't perfect, you know, you don't have to pass them by. You just have to plan your project around it. And that's what I did here. I made sure it was really good on one side because you're only going to see one side. So, you don't, it's not necessarily cheaper. It's just, you know, if you're not going to see it, it doesn't really matter. And sanding everything here, kind of leveling it out and then giving it a final sanding. My just went together really well, by the way. I was, I impressed myself on that one. And the table. Um, I already sanded all the pieces before I glued it up, but I'm just kind of giving it a, a final clean up there. Um, getting rid of my pencil marks and a little of the glue squeeze out. And just kind of giving it a once over. The uh, blue chair in the background, that's another video that was out last week. You should go check that out. A little renovation. And then, this is the detail work. This is what makes uh, furniture better. You know, if, you, if this was a shop project, I wouldn't be doing this little tiny detail work here making sure that all the, the joints were perfect. And I'm kind of beveling the feet here, so if this table slides across the a hardwood floor, it's not going to splinter out. Always a good idea, just a little bit of a bevel. That's all it takes. Alright, hand sanding just to kind of break the edges. This is going to be a side table to my customer's reading chair. And uh, Waco Danish Oil. I love this finish for interior projects. Um, it really looks good on the cherry. It will allow the cherry to age a nice color. Um, and it's renewable, so if you do scratch it or nick it or something, you can just sand a little bit and put more oil on and you'll never see the damage. It's awesome. I use this finish pretty much everything interior. And uh, one good coat to start with and then a couple days later I'll give it another coat and then if I still have the piece around, which this one I will, about a week later I'll give it another coat. And that should do it. Flipping this over just to get the bottom there. And then just kind of wipe everything down. You'll know when it won't take any more oil. This, um, this took the oil pretty well. I didn't have to like keep pouring it on like I do on some. Giving the uh, top another coat. So the top will definitely get more coats than the base. and wiping it all down. Okay, now time for the tile. I have never done tile before, so this is new to me. And I have my glasses off because I see better with up close without them. And I found this is was really kind of intimidating to me um, without ever having to do tile before. But I found a product that's both tile and grout. And I thought that was kind of cool. So I used that and it was the color I wanted. And I just used a notch trowel to get the uh, kind of the thin set set down. And then these are little quarter inch spacers. I have my level on there, making sure it's flush with the tabletop. 
and I'm gonna let that dry overnight and then time to grout so same material um, I don't know if this is the way you're supposed to do tile this is the way I did tile I did some research um, and I have watched people do tile before I knew uh, so 45 degrees with the rubber float to kind of get it in there and uh, I just wanted to make sure that my edges to the wood looked really good and then kind of more of a 90 degree uh, the trowel to the tile to to pick it up I'm noticing some spots that didn't work out so well so I'm fixing it getting the major goop off with the spatula or not spatula whatever that thing is called scraper do that and then uh, I had a bucket of water down here uh, use warm water it makes things a lot easier it's Ezra in the background the Bengal cat um, cleaning it up until it's not so goopy anymore trying not to touch the grout lines with the towel but only the sponge and then the sponge you can kind of use it to shape the grout a little bit it's getting a major fuzz off I don't that's the one horror story is the hazing on the tile um, so my customer made these tiles it's a crossroads pattern and uh, it's kind of meaningful for her she's had some life changes this year and I think she made the tile to kind of reflect that and she asked me to build her a table for her new house so that's the story of the tile um, this is how I'm going to attach the top to the base is I'm using my plate joiner and I'm going to make two passes at it uh, changing the depth to give me a little slot uh, you'll see in a minute and laying my Oregon State Quarter which is kind of my trademark Here's the little buttons. I kind of made a little L out of the scrap wood and I have a little screw. I use a stainless steel screw here uh, and it's kind of lining the top up. And then these little guys will allow the top to move independently from the base. If the weather changes where this is going, it gets hot and it gets cold so this will be good and here it is finished still a little haze on the tile I'm gonna give that one more go with the uh, like a glass cleaner to get the final fuzz off turned out really good level um, her coffee cup will be very happy sitting there and her book I really like this project was intimidated to do it but glad I finally did and that's how we made it <laughs>